welcome to Spikes and Heels, the fitness show for badass women. My name's Bangs, I am a fashion, lifestyle and fitness blogger. I started my blog Spikes and Heels for women who like to train hard. My name is Jeanette Kwarty, I am a 100 metre sprinter who has competed at the 2008 Summer Olympic Games in Beijing. On this show, we're going to teach you how to make sure you're committed to your programme but looking brilliant whilst doing it. Hello and welcome to Spikes and Heels. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the lunge exercise. In Pro Athletes, we speak to Team GB volleyball player Shauna Mullen. We'll also be reviewing the ab roller exercise and also looking at the personal Pilates trainer. In Spike style, we talk to Lulu Lemon about their ridiculously nice workout clothes. And I'll also be speaking to Laura Bauer from Rafa about their Women's 100 project. On today's Fitbit, we're going to be looking at the lunges exercise. Now, the thing about lunges, not only does it turn up your glutes, it gives you an all-over lower body workout and it is great for your hamstrings and your quadriceps as well. There's various different variations of this exercise and I'm going to show you three of them today. So the first one is a standard one. You can do this with or without weights, but stand really relaxed with both feet shoulder width apart and I'd like you to step forward with one foot and lunge down. Now use your hips to go towards the floor, come back up towards you and then alternate the leg. I would recommend maybe 10 to 15 of these on each leg, nice and easy and on the spot. So the second part of the lunge exercise is to actually have your feet shoulder width apart. I'd like you to lunge forward, making sure that your hips are going down towards the ground and as you come back up, I'd like you to bring your following leg through. Now, the leg that you're standing on is where you should really feel the effect. You should feel a nice tightening sensation in your gluteal muscles, knowing that you're working. The third part of the lunge exercise is a really nice and explosive exercise. I like to call this the alpine skiing type of exercise for lunge. Stand on the spot, feet shoulder width apart, and I'd like you to jump into the lunge position and jump out of the lunge position, alternating the leg. This is a really explosive and powerful exercise and it will get you fit and firm and toned up really quickly. Today on Pro Athletes, we're talking to Shauna Mullen, a former Team GB volleyball athlete. Shauna, tell me a little bit about what the training involves exactly. Um, sure, we do a lot of lifting. We have to be very strong and, and fast while we're on the sand. Um, so we do a, a lot of, of Olympic lifting, great, a big part of our program. We do a lot of cardio to make sure we're fit enough to, to sustain the level we need to on the sand. As well as that, we do technical sessions, which we break down into two. We break down into skill sessions and then game sessions. So the skills, we break down all of our skills at the beginning of the season and build them up using medicine balls um, and um, bands to make the technique heavier, so to change the process, to change the habit, and then to make it really stick. So that's kind of the skill sessions. And then the game sessions, we work a lot about um, the game mentality, changing the rhythm of the game, knowing how to see when the game changes are, are there, and then obviously trying to learn to win. Our first game was against Canada at the Olympics. Um, we were at the Olympic Stadium, there was two warm-up courts, so you, we were right behind the stadium. We could hear everything that was going on in, um, in the stadium. The DJ was ramping up the crowd, no end, and, and it, would, it was quite daunting trying to warm up and focus on the match while that was going on right next to you. Um, and as home nation team, we, we went into the stadium last. Uh, Canada called on and the, the whole stadium exploded. I thought, oh no, there's no British people in the, public, in, in the, in the crowd. It's all Canadians, we're not gonna have any support. And honestly, walking into the stadium, I still today get goosebumps just at the noise level and the amount of support we had and when we were playing the game, as much as we are kind of in our own little bubble and trying to focus on what we do, having that support around you the entire time, I mean, when you lost a point, everyone went, oh, and when you won a point, everyone was like, yay! Um, and it really did just kind of magnify all the emotions we had during the games and it really is just the one thing that I'll keep with me, although we won that match against Canada and, and I guess Putting a performance together in our first game at our first Olympic Games was just something that no one expected us to do, so that was an amazing thing. But also just the support we had um, at, at the event was just amazing. <laughs> 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 
On today's Mean Machines, we are looking at the good old ab roller, also known as an ab wheel. And when we're talking about Mean Machines, this machine most definitely is mean. Oh, it looks innocent enough. Sure it does. But don't be deceived, my friends. The ab roller's mean. Essentially, this is a great ab workout. If you're looking for something different from sit-ups, if you're getting a bit bored of that, add this piece of equipment in to really vary it and really be in a lot of pain for prolonged periods of time. It hurts. The ab wheel does exactly what it says on the tin, focuses on your abs, but beneath that it's also going to really get into the core and focus on stability because you really need to be holding in a lot and focusing on being stable as you're rolling the wheel out. Along with that you're going to be looking at really strengthening the midsection in general and also looking at pelvic strength and really uh, balancing your pelvis area out to be able to get that roll in nice and deep. I really like the ab wheel as an addition to my kind of home workout routine. It is hard though and it takes a long time to build up to being able to use it at the top level which is rolling out from standing. It takes a long time to work up to that and just you'll find even just doing a few reps you really feel it the next day. So at least you definitely know it's working, it's very effective and I would say worth the money. So the ab wheel is a favourite of mine for sure. So Jeanette, we just saw you there slightly struggling with the ab wheel. How did you find it? It's really tough. Now I'm known to have quite good ab strength and I found this <laughs> I found this really challenging. Like when I was doing the one against the wall, I actually couldn't move back off the wall. You have to have a really, really high level of strength in your ab muscles. Right. So would you recommend it for people who are just beginning to work on their ab strength? I think it has benefits. I think that if you do a few more simple exercises, you'll be okay. But for anybody who's advanced, absolutely. Beginners, not so much. Okay. How about a mark out of 10? What would you give it? Well, I'd like to give it really high marks, but because it caused me so much suffering, I think I'd probably have to give it a 6 out of 10. Okay, that's a 6. Today on Apps and Stats, we are taking a look at a Pilates app called Personal Pilates Trainer. Pilates is definitely one of my favourite exercises, but I do find that it can be a little pricey when you go out and try and find a class. And also, so much of it is dependent on the instructor in terms of what your experience is going to be like when you're in a class. The good thing about trying it out on an app at home first is that you can really get to grips with the fundamentals of Pilates, the principles of the exercise. I've done a lot of Pilates practice in various classes and I'm able to kind of take that away and use it at home, but it's good to have an app that gives you a bit of a structure to follow if you can't quite remember the way it all works in the class. So one of the things I really like about Personal Pilates Trainer as an app is that it gives you selected workouts you can do for fundamental beginner or intermediate level so regardless of what stage you're at there's a workout there for you to try out it gives you different lengths of workouts so you can do a quick kind of 10 minute blast or the longest class class that they have is uh, 36 minutes around about that so it's not going to take too much of your day you can obviously do it at your own pace and another great feature of this particular app is that you can actually build your own workout with it so it has a workout catalog of all the different exercises that you can do in Pilates and you can actually pick and choose your favorites out of that make it into a workout and you can just practice that whenever you want so I think that's really good to kind of add some variety and you're picking what you want to do rather than this dictating what you should do so that's what I like about it really easy to follow I like that it has a really in-depth section about the fundamentals of Pilates which are about kind of breathing pelvic placement all of those kind of things which are really important to master first so there's a really in-depth part in that built into the app which I think is great so that you're actually practicing safely which is really important especially with a slow exercise kind of regimen like this uh, I think it's a great app and I recommend it to everybody great. Today on Spike Style, we're here at Lululemon Athletica to talk about what factors you should be looking for when you're buying your activewear. Hi, I'm Aoife from Lululemon, and today I'm going to give you my top three tips when buying athletic apparel. So tip number one is function. When you're buying your gear, you want to think about what sport you're going to be taking part in. What is it that you need from your, um, from your clothing to help you in your actual sport? So for example, if you're going to a yoga session, you want something that's form-fitting, you want something that looks good on your body, that feels good when you actually sweat, and also something that moves with you while you sweat. Tip number two is technical. 
So if you're buying product for your running or high intensity sports, you want to buy product that is lightweight, um, that is compressing, so it means that it holds your muscles in when you're doing your runs or when you're in your active class, whether it's spinning or kettlebells. Um, at Lululemon we have Luxstream fabric, which means it's sweat wicking, it hugs into your skin, um, and also it's form fitting, um, it's lightweight, and it allows you, it, it actually moves with your body as, as, you, as you run. Tip number three is fun. So at Lululemon we're quite tongue in cheek in the way that we, we do everything with our brand and we always want to make sure that our product reflects that as well. So for instance on our men's technical gear, their Metal Vent Tech t-shirts, we actually have little, little taglines on the inside of the t-shirts to motivate you when you sweat. So if you're sweating, you always should go for a beer afterwards. Reward yourself when you're out and, out and about. Food processors are great. This summer, I'm going to be riding the Etape du Tour, which is a 130 kilometer leg of the Tour de France through the French Alps. I'm going to be tracking my training journey with you guys throughout the series, and you can follow me doing a little video diary. Today on Bangs and a Bike, we are here at Rafa HQ speaking to Laura about the Etape and the Rafa Women's 100. So Laura, you have roped me into the Etape. I have. Why? Why on earth did you do that to me? Well, in truth, it's a little bit of an experiment. Uh, I knew that you were very into your running, into boxing, already very fit, and also have this amazing way of talking about sport in an incredibly real way. And I don't think that's been done so much about cycling uh, for women anyway. They haven't really shown the warts and all. And uh, I just wanted to see what would happen if we got you on a bike. Just see if it's worked out well so far. It's an interesting experiment. <laughs> this yeah. is true. And um, so off the back of that, you guys here have just come up with the Rafa Women's 100. Tell me a little bit about that. We wanted, uh, it was firstly, it's the 100th uh, anniversary of the 100th edition of the Tour de France this year. So the Etape de Tour was part of it, but then we wanted to take it global. So it was like, right, 7th of July, the day of the Etape de Tour, let's just get women around the world to ride 100 kilometres wherever they are. Literally, wherever you are, go and ride 100 kilometres. Uh, so we launched that uh, a couple of months ago and since then have just been overwhelmed by the response really. So once the Women's 100 has taken place mm. on July 7th, what kind of measures are Rafa putting in place to ensure that women don't just get on the bike for that day, but are staying on the bike and, and training and going forward and doing yeah. more kind of sportifs and, and things? What we will certainly do is make sure that we continue to produce beautiful content on the website and inspiring content around women, uh, continue having regular rides. I'd like to see another challenge put in place soon after that. Uh, perhaps for people who haven't finished the attack, we'll take them back to do it. Um, just encouraging women to keep riding. And I think um, the main thing is that we will have a series of women's rides happening all the time throughout the year. Oh, so yeah. it'll be all about the women's. All about the women. Nice. Yeah. So that's it for today's show. Massive thank you to Shauna Mullen, Laura Bauer from Rafa, and of course, Lululemon for showing us their lovely clothes. And we want to thank Fitness First for their facilities also. So, hope you enjoyed the show, and I uh, guess we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>